A lot of people want to know, is there a way of using the old commie filters without inhaling asbestos because people want the, you know, filters for some sort of cosplay thing or something like that. And some of them do look really cool, especially things like EO16 filters. I mean, this is like a giant brown coffee can. That's a really cool looking filter. It says EO65K, but I'm pretty sure it's an EO16 filter. Um, so people want to know, is there a way that you can safely use these filters without inhaling asbestos? And I think I've come up with a good idea that I'm going to put to the test myself um, and risk my own long-term health doing it. So if it doesn't work, I'm to blame. Um, but I, before I go any further, I will say, obviously, if you choose to do this, you are putting yourself at risk potentially. So you are going to have to really weigh up if you want to do it. But I hear a lot of suggestions in the comments of things. Most of them wouldn't work, but I've come up with something that I think will work. So all you'll need is your uh, commie gas mask you want to use, your commie filters. And what you need to buy is either 3M or another brand, P3 filters, the cotton type ones. And the reason for this is we are going to cut these to shape to fit into the mask's intake so it will block any asbestos that may come out of the filter. Um, into it. So there's two ways of doing this. You can either cut these 3M filters and sandwich them at the top area here and then you know so everything's contained in the filter and that's probably the best way of doing it because any asbestos is still trapped in the filter but it's not the way I'm going to personally do it but I'm just sort of saying that is the way I'm going to do it. But what I'm going to do is if you look at these caps you normally get the rubber sort of things in them either with the hose on the mask or with the actual 40mm intake on the mask itself we are going to cut these pads to actually fit this area here so anything can't come into the pipe itself if that makes sense or the mask so we are going to cut the um, sort of P3 particulate filters to fit either this or this depending on how you wanted to do it um, obviously if you do it into the hose make sure that you always put a filter on the hose and not then directly onto the mask and if you're doing it directly onto the mask, do be aware that obviously when you take that filter off, if asbestos has come out, it might be stuck to the underside of the P3 filter and then you don't, don't want to expose it to the air that way. So do be very careful. Obviously, there are still more risks than this. I would still say, obviously, the safest thing is do not use the filters. But what I'm going to do with this ASHM41 is cut a P3 filter to fit that bit there so it sandwiches in over the washer and we still got a fairly decent amount of screw thread that way filters can screw on but we have um, you know an asbestos removers filter sitting there so you know there'll be a bit more air resistance for breathing but nothing dodgy even charcoal dust can't come out and get into me and I'm using it so we're just gonna measure that now and then we're gonna cut it and then we're gonna assemble it and you'll see it all in practice now if you have one of these rubber caps that comes in the top of the filter it is really useful because we can use this as our measuring thing for cutting because if you look at this that fits in exactly as we want it to covers up the entire air hole so we're gonna use this as our thing to draw around so then when we cut the particulate filter it will be cut to the right shape Okay, you'll see here that what I've used is I've used that rubber filter cap and I've drawn around it with a red marker pen. This is going to be the area I cut. Obviously, you might want to colour it a bit wide. That way, if you cut it a bit wide, you can always cut it down more if you need to. If you cut it too small, obviously, you might have to then waste a bit of the filter and start again. Um, but with if you buy a pack of 2P3 filters like I did for the 3M masks, you can get them for about five or six pounds, and five or six pounds would let you make a lot of these like filter discs. So it's a really cheap way of doing it. Much cheaper than buying FP5 filters or whatever else if you actually just wanted to convert your um, Soviet filters to be potentially safe. Although what I will say obviously is if it's an expired filter, it's not going to protect you from anything really. It'll give you particulate protection this way at least, but um, obviously if you want a new working filter this still isn't the way to go this is simply if you want to for like costume reasons or whatever actually have a real Soviet filter attached to the mask and for it to work right as you can now see I've cut out the particulate filter from this slab so I've still got a load of sort of room left to make more of these um, when we put it in it's important we put it in the writing side up so if you're cutting a P3 filter make sure you know which is the right way round some P3 filters only work in a certain direction so obviously you want to be certain of that so, here we go, what we do, we pop this in, just cushion it down nice and neatly, and as you can see that totally blocks the intake hole now for the mask, or the hose. So then, once we install our canister filter on, or whatever filter you're using, 
there we go. That has now totally sandwiched the particulate layer in. Now, I don't know, obviously it's going to be totally dark down there, so you're not going to see it. But, obviously, we've got the filter, which contains asbestos. We've then got a particulate filter sandwiched in here, as you saw me put in. Then we've got the pipe. So it is now, in theory, totally safe. So I am happy myself to use this now, but as said, there is a risk associated with this, so please make sure you are aware if you're doing it, there is a risk and you need to do it properly. Uh, and make sure you always use a P3 filter, because P3 filters are the level that's approved for asbestos use. A P1 or P2 filter isn't simply going to be good enough for giving yourself a false sense of security, because small asbestos or charcoal fibres are still going to get through that filter. Anyway, I've done it with a 3M P3 filter, the cotton pad type, and now I can actually do tests with this. So the next video you're going to see when I do one is a review and test of an SHM41 with the old retro filter. So there you go. But this theory would work with GP5, it would work with anything. As said, you can put it into the mask's intake hole as well. And then whatever filter you screw on would be fine. In some ways I could imagine you would also do this, could do this with World War II masks, etc. But personally I wouldn't want to risk that at all because of how much dust, you know, and how fragile everything might be in the filter by that point. And some of them are going to be a bit more complicated to do than a Soviet sort of style filter. But there you go. That is how you can safely convert Soviet filters to, uh, you know, be safe to use if you want them for decorative purposes or whatever.